الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ومغفرته Brothers and sisters, this is your boy Imran ibn Mansour aka Da'wa man How are you guys doing? We're back for another edition of Nasiha Sessions Before we continue, as you guys are aware, many of you in fact That the previous Nasiha channel got shut down by YouTube No worries, it's okay, we've got a new one popping off So before we continue, you guys guys need to click the subscribe button below so you can keep updated with the rest of the video so do that now pause do that now subscribe then carry on okay let's go so a sister emailed me a while back and said that she came out of a jahil past when she came out of this jahil past she started practicing she started wearing the hijab and practicing the religion but when she came into the religion, suddenly people started to talk bad about her. They were backbiting her. They were slandering her, making up evil, disgusting lies. They started calling her a slutty hijabi. What a filthy thing to say. But they referred to her like that. And they started saying that she did certain things from her past and she's still doing these things now, even with a hijab on. What happened was that the sister became hurt wrongfully but to some degree understandably but wrongfully she took off her hijab and she regressed in terms of her faith and her religion but she still had enough life in her heart to send over an email to inquire and request for advice so we could help point her in the right direction for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brothers and sisters pay very close attention to what I'm going to say today because to slander against a chaste woman, a woman who is undeserving of what you've said about her, is one of the most major sins that will earn you your place in the hellfire. And if I'm being real, we are all guilty of backbiting, talking and talking rubbish behind people's backs. And at the same time, for the sisters who have been victims, and in some cases brothers, know this you will get comfort after today's video because I will speak to you not from myself but rather I will open up the kitab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Surah Al-Nur Ayah 11 down that page which is a section of ayat that Allah revealed for our mother Aisha radiallahu anha when that filthy disgusting hypocrite Abdullah ibn Ubay started that filthy slander about our mother Aisha radiallahu anha saying that she did zina with one of the companions radiallahu an and this became so bad that the sahaba got involved and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had to send down a warning to them and that is what we're going to talk to you guys about today so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins without any further ado إِنَّ الَّذِينَ جَاءُوا بِالْإِفْكِ عُصْبَةٌ مِّنْكُمْ Allah says it was a gang from amongst you that started off this filthy lie with absolutely no truth. It wasn't one or two, it was a gang, it was a group, it was a team. Allah knows every single one of you sent them texts and said them words and spoke about her on the phone. But now Allah doesn't even want to talk to you. He moves away from you. He wants to give comfort to the sister who's been slandered against. So Allah says, لا تحسبوه شرا لكم Allah says, don't think that what they've said about you is bad for you. You think that what they've said is bad, is destructive to you. Allah says, بل هو خير لكم Rather, the fact that they spoke about you is actually good for you. You know why? Because in the Day of Judgment, sister, every person who said something evil about you, you're going to take their deeds in accordance to what they said about you. And if they run out of deeds, they will take on your bad sins. So Allah says, it is good for you. But then he continues. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, But those who partook in this slander against you, Allah says, they're going to get what they deserve. Allah says, I'm going to punish them. Don't worry. As for the one who started this rumor off, who played the biggest role 
and igniting this fire, Allah says, Adabun Adim, I will punish this person. Whoa. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Why is it that when this speech was brought to the attention of the believing men and believing women Bearing in mind that Allah is questioning your iman right now If you really are a believing man, if you are a believing woman then you should behave like this And if you didn't, but you're sitting down wearing your hijab, walking around with your beard Talking about this sister, Allah is questioning whether you have iman in the first place Because the believing women and believing women, Allah said, you know what they should have done? That when it came to them, they should have thought good from amongst, they should have thought good of the one that was from them. Bi anfusihim khaira. The one that was from them. Because this sister, you're sitting there thinking she's some next chick over there. You don't want to associate and affiliate with her. Allah saying to you, no, she's part of you. She's from your team. She's from your ummah. You're one squad. She's you and you are her. So why is it that you didn't think good of your own self? And then when that speech came, instead of entertaining it, straight away, وَقَالُوا هَذَا إِفْكُمْ مُبِينَ Don't be like, one sec, let me hear what they're saying. Really, did you see it? Are you sure you saw it? Did she definitely say that? Don't try it. Allah says, the moment they start talking to you about this issue, you cut them off. Say, bro, this is a lie. The person comes at you, but I saw the evidences. No, this is a lie. But then the person comes, but I saw it, I promise you, he saw it as well. Bro, this is a lie because Allah saying think good of the believers. They're from amongst you if you are a believer yourself. But then, then Allah continues. Allah says that why? Why is it? that you didn't bring full witnesses. You're accusing her of being a slutty hijabi. You're accusing her of being a fornicatress. Okay, where's your witnesses? Four witnesses, go on. No, 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 no rumors. No, he say, she say. Four witnesses. And forgive me for being a bit straight here, but you must see both sexual organs of the two alleged parties together in the actual act of intercourse Clear as day, four people at the exact same time. Is this likely to happen? No, it is not. You must come with your four witnesses. Did you see it? Allah says, no. If you didn't see it, if you didn't come with your witnesses, فَإِذْلَمْ يَأْتُوا بِالشُّهَدَى If that's the case, فَأُولَٰئِكَ Allah says, the, those people, not these people, these means close. Those people right over there, those who spoke this lie, no matter if they really did see it, if they record, if they took pictures, those people, no, if they didn't come with the four witnesses, فَأُولَٰئِكَ إِنَّ اللَّهِ هُمُ الْكَاذِبُونَ Allah says, no matter how truthful you think you are, how sincere you are in the fact that you think she's a hoe, Allah says, as far as he's concerned, you far, far away from him over there, you're a liar with Allah. Even if you did see it, you one guy saw it, you one sister saw it, but you didn't come with them witnesses, you're a liar as far as Allah's concerned. Brothers and sisters, this is extremely serious. Because in our religion, we're supposed to make excuses for people. Then people come at you like, bro, how many excuses are you going to make? When are you going to give in? She's a hoe. He's a hoe. He's this. Sometimes even lesser issues than that. Brothers and sisters, you know how serious this is? If I told you that a woman is pregnant, and she is unmarried. She is unmarried. And she is pregnant. Would you believe me if I told you that she's still a virgin? You have a woman who says, I've never done zina before. So she's not married. And she's never been married. She's never ever had a man. But she's pregnant. But she claims that she's never done zina before. Would you believe her? I mean, is there any proof greater than there being a person's seminal fluid inside of you that is causing this baby to grow inside of that egg of yours? That you had zina? It's a pretty strong case, right? 
She's an unmarried girl. She's never been married. She's been a virgin as far as we're concerned. She's pregnant. She must have done something, right? That's what me and you would think. But you know what? Even if she's pregnant, in the Sharia, if you don't come with four witnesses, you can't bring a case against her. Wallahi, this actually happened to Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an. A woman came to him, a virgin woman, and said, Wallahi, ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, I am a righteous woman, I am a chaste woman, I am a clean woman, but I am pregnant. But Wallahi, I am still a virgin. What do you think Umar did? Did he say, Qadi, deal with her? Rather he said, okay, explain yourself. She said, I'm actually a very heavy sleeper. And I sleep so heavy that even if you come and shake me, I won't wake up. So far, this is true. There are people that it's actually an illness people suffer from. They get shaken so hard whilst they're sleeping, they don't actually wake up. She said, one day when I woke up, in between my legs, I felt a man's liquid. A wetness, the seminal fluid of a man. She said what had happened was that there was a man who had entered upon her while she was sleeping and he had violated her. He didn't actually do zina with her, but he did whatever he did. And he had ejaculated and somehow, some way, that seminal fluid found its way into her regions without damaging the hymen, the layer of skin, that she's still a virgin, it actually managed to fertilize the egg. Brothers and sisters, believe it or not, but this is actually something that is scientifically true. It is an extremely, extremely, extremely rare thing to ever happen. But it can happen. As far as the Sharia is concerned, you have to prove the person guilty beyond any doubt, not reasonable doubt, beyond any, there has to be zero, 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 zero doubt. You've exhausted all possible excuses, but it no longer works. She did zina. Brothers and sisters, Umar ibn Khattab and said, go, fine, do your thing. I believe you, no worries. Allah knows best. If you did it, Allah's going to deal with you. But if you didn't, as far as I'm concerned, I believe you. There were no four witnesses. Go, have a good day. Yet yeah, you and me, a woman who's pregnant, claiming to be free from zina. Umar doesn't want to label her as a fornicatious, but you want to go a court sister who put on a hijab trying to change her life a slightly hijabi? <sighs> Do you know what the punishment for that is, brothers and sisters? Allah said in the ayat that came before that these people get lashed 80 times. Lashed 80 times. Do you know how serious that is? If you do the act of zina outside of marriage, you get lashed a hundred. Slandering a person, you get lashed twenty just less. The lashing being so high for the word that you said is that deep that it should show you how scary it is that what you've said against the sister. Fear Allah and make tawba. At least if you would have been lashed 80 times for the slander that you did against the sister or sisters that you spoke against, on the day of judgment, you know that you would be expiated. Because if you go through the punishment in this world, the lashing, it cleans the sin for you. The whole point of the, of the lashing is that you don't have to stand before Allah on the day of judgment. Him open the book and say, right there, yeah, remember when you said this about her? But you're not going to get lashed now, are you? We don't have that kind of Islamic legal system. So you don't know if you've been forgiven for that slander you did against her. So it's still very possible that on the day of judgment, Allah will stand this sister there, stand you there, open up your books, each and every single one of you who spoke about her, and said, okay, you, you didn't get those 80 human lashes, but now you're going to get the equivalent of that on this day. Brothers and sisters, make serious tawbah. Message anyone, anyone who you've upset and hurt, brothers and sisters, message them, I beg of you, message them and tell them, please forgive me. Tell them, please forgive me, I have wronged you and I shouldn't have done that, please, tell them, please forgive me. Seriously, it's that deep. And then, because time is short, we go forward a few more ayat. Allah gives each and every single one of 
those who slander from amongst us a serious and staunch advice. Allah says, يعظكم الله أن تعودوا لمثله أبدا إن كنتم مؤمنين. Allah says, I'm advising you. I'm warning you. I'm warning you, slanderers. Don't ever let this happen again for any woman like this in any way, shape, or form. Not just Aisha radiallahu anha, لِمِثْلِهِ abada. Anyone like this in this situation, don't ever in your life talk about another woman again. Don't you dare ever. Then Allah says, إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ If you are believers. You want to be a believer? And to Jannah pray five times a day? Wear the hijab yourself? Don't you dare ever talk about another woman again. Otherwise, that is a sign that you're not really a real believer, are you? So call up anyone who you've slandered and apologize. And if you feel that that person who you've slandered, it will hurt them even more to know that you said what you said and it will create more fitna, then in that situation, don't call them up. Don't tell them. But go and spread just as much or more good about them than when you spread evil. Call up those people that you spoke badly to her about and tell her, yo, 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 she's actually good. I got it wrong. And praise her and praise her to the people. And call her and show her love and make dua for her. To Allah to increase her and then make dua for your own forgiveness. My beloved sister, now, from amongst those who had slandered Aisha radiallahu anha was a man who was a relative of hers. His name was Mista radiallahu an. Mista radiallahu an was a relative of her father Abu Bakr radiallahu an. And Mista was a very poor man. Mista was so poor that he didn't have enough funds to survive on his own. So Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he became the person who funded him. His bread and butter, food and everything depended on Abu Bakr radiallahu an. When Abu Bakr found out that this man who survives as a result of what I provide for him with Allah's permission, spoke against and about my daughter, can you imagine the kind of pain that he felt? Not only that, but it's his daughter that he spoke about. Not only that, his daughter is his mother. Because Allah says that the wives of the Prophet are the mothers of the believers. If someone, this is your mom, that hurts you because she's your mom. Because she told you she's your mom. But it hurts us more when someone, this is the wife of the Prophet because Allah told me she's my mom. So he's even more upset. Then the fact that she is the wife of the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the messenger is his best friend. He's just fuming right now. And Abu Bakr has got so much anger inside him. But he controls the anger. What would be a situation where it's like, I'm going to go down, punch his face, bust his face, knock him out. He controls all that anger, suppresses it, and then what was going to be like a stab becomes a little flick. He says, you know what? I, I'm not going to do him any more favors. That's so all he says. I'm just going to stop giving him money. I'm going to stop doing him favors. You see how he calmed his anger down? You see how he hardly did anything wrong to him? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wants more from the believers. Especially Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu because of his stature. My sister, I'm going to recite to you the ayah Allah recited for Abu Bakr, but I'm going to apply it to you. And this is for anyone else who has been wronged by a person and has held something in their heart against this person. This is for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا يَأْتَ لِأُولُوا الْفَضْلِ مِنْكُمْ وَالسَّعَةِ أَنْ يُؤْتُوا أُولِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْمُهَاجِرِينَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Allah says, those who are better amongst you, meaning you, you're better than these people. They slandered against you, you're better and you've got more virtue than them. Allah says, because you're so good, it doesn't defeat you, my sister, to be angry and annoyed and upset with them and to say, you know what, I'm not going to help you. I'm not going to be there for you. It doesn't befit you, my sisters, to hold this grudge against these people who mock you. Allah says, rather, he's prepared to forgive them. 
If he's prepared to forgive them, Allah, then how is it that you are not ready to forgive them? So then Allah commands you, Allah says, erase. Don't just forgive what they did. Erase what they did. Don't forgive them for what they did. The word, وَلْيَعْفُوا Erase that thing that they did to you. And on that paper, whilst you erased it, وَلْيَصْفَحُوا Move on. Turn the page. Don't go back to that erased page. You erased it, that's fine. But start fresh, clean page. And carry on with them as if everything is normal and show them even more love. But that can sometimes be a little bit hard to do. Especially if someone close to us mocked us. But you know what? Allah understands our human weakness, so He gives us one final incentive. And this incentive, this, if this does not convince you to let go what they did to you, then it might be an issue in your iman. Allah says, Allah says, forgive them and turn the page. You know why? Because you want to be forgiven for all of your sins as well, don't you? Wouldn't you love that Allah forgave you? Sure, they violated you, but have you not violated Allah's rights in the past? None of us are perfect. We're all sinners. It's okay. You did wrong, but we do wrong as well. You want to be forgiven too, don't you? So if you want Allah to forgive you, forgive them. Allah will forgive the one who forgives. Allah is the most forgiving, the most merciful. Everyone wants to be forgiven, don't they? And the cost is that I just, I let you go, whatever go. But whatever, it's okay. And when you do that, Allah will forgive you too, inshallah. And my sister, put your hijab back on. You put the hijab on for the sake of Allah. But you took it off because of the people. I mean this with love and compassion. You're a queen and the honor and the pride of this Ummah. And that modesty that you carry, the hijab, hijab and the abaya, that's your pride. Put it back on. Aisha radiallahu anha, when they slandered her, she didn't move away from the religion. She came closer. She said, rather, فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ وَاللَّهُ الْمُسْتَعَانُ عَلَى مَا تَصِفُونَ I will have beautiful patience, is what she said. I will be patient. Talk about me. But I will be beautifully patient. I won't even mock, you know, be upset at the fact that you're saying this. Whatever, say it in my face, whatever. I'll affirm it. And then she said, Wallahu musta'anu ala ma tasifun. But you people, I need help against you. So I'm going to seek help from Allah. Allah is the one sought for help in situations like this. She turned to Allah. And when she turned to Allah, Allah sent down those verses to honor her and protect her and clear her name. So my sister, come back to Allah. The mistake is to move away. Come back to Him wherever you are. Come back. Put it on from today. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides you in us and keeps us firm and forgives us all for our slanders and sins and grants us istiqamah upon a religion. I mean, brothers and sisters, share the video, like the video, pass it around, especially to people who you know that have slandered in the past and people that you know who have been slandered. Make this a, a, a situation where you don't just watch the video and benefit, but you think to yourself, someone must have said this to me at some point in the past and send this video to them, inshallah, as well and encourage them to watch it. Then I ask you and request you, please, if you benefited from this video, go to the link below and share a donation. These videos with the graphic and everything, media expenses that we need to cater for. Allah, he doesn't come into our pockets as I've said many times. He's like, I, I have to get this outsourced so you can have all these cool, amazing interactive graphics that helps you follow the video. You have to help us financially so we can carry on bringing this to you. Share the video, like it, subscribe to the channel. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Peace.